Hi, everyone. I am so excited because I am speaking with author Maureen Connolly, and we are talking about her brand-new book, debut novel called Little Lovely Things that is coming out tomorrow, and I am so happy that I got to read this book, Maureen. So, oh, so happy. Oh, I'm happy, too, that you did. Believe me. <laughs> I have to tell you this morning. So I always try to read it like right before I talk to you. But I spent yesterday, like I read it all day yesterday, and then I saved the last part um, for this morning, right? Oh, so I'm awesome. like, uh, it's early, early. Like it's like five thirty, six o'clock this morning, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna finish this up, and I'm reading it in bed, and all of, like the ending happens, and I burst into tears. <laughs> And I was like, that does, you know, I read a lot of books. That does not happen to me, okay? That's great. That's great. You're being very emotional this morning, okay? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that's, that's, ter- that's terrific news. So couldn't be more excited to hear that. Yeah, and everybody, don't even, don't even, okay? Because if you don't read the whole book, you're not even going to understand why that happened, okay? But I, it was because I was so involved in this story. I really believe, like, I felt like Claire and I were friends and, like, mm. <laughs> you know. Oh, that's wonderful. And she really, I mean, did you find her really, really, I know you're supposed to ask the questions, but I'm going to ask you. Okay. Did you find her extremely relatable to your life? Oh, you know. definitely. And you know what? I think as a mom, you know, like, first of all, as a mom, like, I found her so relatable. Um, and I was a working mom, um, yeah. not okay. quite to her extent, but, you know, I did in the beginning. I had six children, so in the, the first couple of them I worked. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. God bless you. Wow. But, you know, this is every mother's nightmare. So, you know, I'm going to let you tell us the, you know, the story, and then okay. we, I have I have okay. more things. I have quotes stuff that I want to talk about so sure well I'll give you a brief overview first of all thank you so much for this opportunity it's it's so terrific and the fact that my debut novel is coming out tomorrow I'm so excited and being able to talk about it with you is just it's just like icing on the cake you know Mm. um you had mentioned this idea of every mother's nightmare about little lovely things and while that is through there's also so much hope in this book, so I, I'm mm-hmm. careful not to put people off by that sense because really, okay, so this novel, I'll be careful what I say. But, I know. You know, it's an abduction story, let's be honest. And, um, you know, it's, it's, initially it's about loss. And, um, but as, it, as we move forward through it, I was really um, taken by the idea of what happens after we suffer great tragedy. You know, how do we repair mm-hmm. ourselves? How do we pull ourselves back together? And you see it all the time on the news. You see it, you know, people who suffer natural disasters, things like abduction, whatever, and then the news goes off. And then you go on with your life, and you're left with the curiosity of what happens next. And this is what I wanted to explore in Little Lovely Things, and I wanted to explore it from more than one viewpoint. So while Claire is the main, you know, she's the protagonist, I really wanted to sort of 360 it, this experience, and take it forward and see how their lives, people's lives evolved afterwards. And then really the theme is about self-rescue. How do, you, how do you bring yourself to the next step? How do you overcome enough to carry on and really overcome, you know? So yeah. I, I think that it really strikes a hopeful note. I'm hoping that you caught that when you read it. Oh, you know what? Absolutely. I, and I think that's why it hit me as hard as it did is because of that. And when you said that, I was like, yeah, I didn't say that. It's like the part that hit me the hardest was when she had to dig down deep. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, yeah. and, and find and figure out like who she was. And it's like, it's like she has to do this work and there's no way around it. Yeah. Right? And I think that that makes her, or in the other characters, it's the same story. They all have yes. different trajectories, some positive, some negative, but they all have to do some kind of work to arrive at the next stage in their life. And, you know, that's the reality. We all face that in different ways, right? In big, in big ways and in small ways, too. Otherwise, we don't grow, right? Exactly. And, you know, the line that I loved so much was um, at the end of the, I don't know if you want to call it the first chapter, but the end of the like little prologue, you say, this family was the closest thing to a single perfect organism. And 
I remember when all six of my children were at home and, you know, it's busy and you've got events and you've got, you know, sports and everything. And I remember being like so happy, like just watching them. Like you take a step back and you're like, wow, look at them. They're talking, they're, you know, they're fighting, they're doing whatever they do. No, you know, I, you know, you hear that all the time from moms, like when their nest is full, meaning the kids are all home. It doesn't matter how old they are. And like you said, what they're doing, there's just some sort of joy that almost beyond explanation with having that feeling of, you know, we feel complete then. I, you know, I think most moms yeah. would say that, you know. Yeah, I love that you ended it with that thought. And, you know, I only have one child at home now. He's 16, so he's not even a child. But, you know, we all go through that loss of, you know, not this loss, but that loss. I went mm-hmm. through that loss of that yes. one by one by one. And my fifth child just left yesterday. Again, that's oh. why I'm like an emotional mess back to college. Oh and, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, and, and they look so grown up and they look so, you know, but, yes. you know, that's what I loved about her because I was like, you have to keep doing that you got to keep doing the work you've got to keep finding like when I'm not mom anymore when I'm not you know when they're not running to me with their problems anymore and you know I loved her I and the the other cat like I love that you did those four different points of view okay that you did because I really did and I really felt it was important to the narrative you know absolutely and you know because you could have just stayed with her Mm -hmm. But I think that adding them into it made it so much more real, the story and what was going on. And, you know, like, I don't know, it just kind of brought it to life, I thought. Thank you, because that's what I was hoping. And, you know, um, just to continue on that motherhood theme, not to to bang it, you know, into the ground. But I really wanted to explore Claire's sense of identity related to motherhood as she moved forward. Because I think that... Just like you say, when your children leave for college or whatever, you still feel a little bit of loss of identity oh. as a mom because they're not relying on you. You're not tying shoes anymore and all of that, you know? Yeah. And, um, I think that's important to explore, you know? Yeah. Yes. And, yeah, that, I think that's why I loved her so much is because she, when all else failed, she knew she had to do the work. You know, like she tried to to not, she tried to, you know, we tried to cover it up. Like, okay, I'm not going to deal with this. I'm not going to deal with this. I'm just going to move on, you know, and until she couldn't, you know, and I think we do that too. It's like, oh, wait, this isn't bothering me. This doesn't bother me. Nothing bothers me. I'm good. I'm good. You know? Right. So until it becomes crisis, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So everybody is looking at this cover and, um, I love the title. Like when I first saw this cover, because, you know, now with the Internet, we get to see these books way before. <laughs> so right. I've been I know. seeing this Great. book. Yeah, I've been seeing this book, and I was like, little lovely things. And I thought it was, you know, I love the, the black, and I love the colors. And, you know, oh. but as I'm reading this and going back and, like, realizing that, you know, they're little girls. Like, you don't really picture, you don't really pick up on the little girls until you really look at it, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I was like. Huh, I wonder, okay, the title. Did you pick the title? So that's such an interesting story. No. I mean, so here's how it works. When you have a publisher, they either like your title or they don't that you're going in with. And um, uh, and I was prepared for that. And it took us a long time to sort of go back and forth. My wonderful editor, Anna Michaels, had a viewpoint, and I had one. And so we would send each other lists. And it went on for several months. And, like, there would be lists where I'd say, oh, delete. And then she would, you know. And then one list came to me, and um, in Little Lovely Things was, like, in the middle of it. And I said, huh, I could live with that. I read it to my husband, and he said, wait, wait, read those back. You know, because I went really quickly through them. And he goes, ah, that one's not too bad. So I said that to Anna, thinking we would build from there. And she goes, it's done, done, it's going to marketing. And I said, wait, wait, wait. And so I wasn't yet in love with it, but when I saw the cover art, I Mm. was stunned. And their source books graphics department read the book, and they came up with this cover, and it stole my heart because it's perfect. And the way they described it to me was, we have that dark background, you know, representing the darkness that occurs, but we have those bright colors on Mm -hmm. top. 
to represent the hope that you've brought through too. So for me, I think this cover is just stunning, really. And oh my god! Together with the now, I love the title too. So it worked out. It it actually like as I'm looking at it, I'm I'm feeling that emotion again that I did at the end of the book. I'm like, oh my gosh, here I am, like looking at it, going, oh, it is. It's so perfect. It oh, really... well, let me tell you. Can I play share something crazy with you? Yeah. I, because this is my debut novel that took me 19 million years to write and blah blah blah. <laughs> I am going to book signing events and stuff dressed to match this cover. <gasps> that is it. Okay. I'm looking at your book signings because I want to see where you, oh, you are coming to Philly. I'm in yeah. Allentown. Oh, you're coming to Doylestown. You're going to the Doylestown Bookshop. I love that bookshop. Oh, please come, please come. I'm going to be all over the place, and I'm dressing like this, and then I'm doing a national book tour after the local stuff. So, um, my I didn't even off, realize, you, are you in New York? I'm, in, I'm outside of Philly. I'm in Bucks County. Oh, my gosh. I did not even realize that because I'm in Allentown. So That's we are so, so close. Great. <laughs> I'm going to be up at the Moravian Bookstore, too. I had such a list. It's so exciting. I and love the Moravian Bookstore. I, I don't see it. You just have a more to come. So, yeah, that, I love that bookstore so much. I go there a lot. And But I've been to the Doylestown, and I've been to the one in Newtown, and also that – oh, that's – oh, there it is. That's – okay, Saturday, April 28th. There we go. And I, I'm going – so this Thursday – the actual kickoff to the launch is going to be at the iconic stream yeah. in Manhattan. So excited oh. about that. We yeah. sold out. Sold out all the tickets. So great. And then I'm coming back to Philly and I'm to Britain House and then this area and then I'm going to start traveling. I'm from the Midwest. I'm from Michigan. I hope there's a Midwestern sensibility that comes through in the book. Yeah. And so I'm going to definitely do the Midwest and um, probably California as well and certainly down south. So I'm so excited to wear all these bright clothes I bought. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And you know what, everybody, the thing I love about book signings, if you've never been to one, is that we can talk more about the book because everybody, you know, a lot of the people have already read it and mm-hmm. they have really in-depth questions, which I love because we don't do that. We just give you a little taste. But when you go to a book signing, you get you get it all. You can ask whatever you want, and you, can, you get people around you who already read it. I just love that because I love talking to people and being like, can you believe that part? Like, you know, uh, it's just, well, I it's love so meeting fun. people face-to-face that have, you know, that want to ask me questions, and I, I'm so yes. excited about that, you know. And I'm encouraging people, by the way, to wear something bright if you come. Wear one of those colors. Ooh, <laughs> Demonstrate okay. hope in the world, you know, so that that should be fun. But, yeah, I'm just looking forward to this whole experience, and I just can't wait to interact with readers, you know. Oh, I, think I, I am so great. excited for you. When I saw this was a debut, I was like, her, your future looks so bright. Like, oh. I can't wait. Are you, before I let you go, are you writing anything, or are you just, like, basking in this? <laughs> in this well, one? I, I wish I was basking. I <laughs> editor and a publisher I wasn't quite prepared for that so I do have book two and three they're neck and neck in my brain so I don't know how I'm going to work that out but after yes after the launch etc and things settle down a little I'm going to get to work but I'm not sure which idea I'm going to develop and I I, I'm sorry to tell you I don't talk about my ideas in advance I just don't because I feel like it I feel like it kills them a little bit you know so well You know what? I I know that whatever you write, it's going to be amazing because, like I said, for this to be your debut, it's just, uh, it's so awesome. I'm seeing it everywhere. I'm seeing it all over social media. Everybody is just as excited as I am for you. Uh And, you know, it's going to be fun. You should just have fun, you know, the whole book signing thing and, you know. I'm so excited to have fun. You're absolutely right, yeah. Yeah, you've worked hard for it. So, everybody, I'm going to be putting all her links listed below, all Maureen's links. I'm going to put the IndieBound link so you can go to your local bookstore, support your local bookstore. I will also put the Amazon link because you can pre-order it. Well, today it's going to be out. This will be out tomorrow. So you can just get it. You can just get it on your Kindle and have it today. But <laughs> that's why I like to put all the links. Send me all the notes links. about it. Send me comments. Tell me everything about it because I'd love yes. to hear some readers. I want to start a dialogue, you know. So 
I'm so well, excited about that. So please we, buy it and read it. <laughs> we will be on. I will be on tomorrow on social media, and we, you know, I will see everybody chatting about it. But um, I am going to meet you. I'm going. I'm going to the Meridian Bookstore, and I will meet you at the end of this month. So I'm very excited about right. that, and we'll take pictures and we'll post them, and it'll be fun. Oh, so. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maureen. Oh. Thank you for thank you for this book. It was oh, such a fun, fun so ride. So this was great, and I so appreciate this t- opportunity to talk to you and and your followers. And uh, I'm just excited. And thank you for sharing that excitement with me. Yeah. And now we don't have to say goodbye because I can say see you soon because I'll yeah, see you. Here you go. Perfection. <laughs> okay. Have a great day. You too. Bye bye. Bye.